So today we're taking a first look at the Z42, a new premium German tier 10 destroyer. And it's a little bit special thanks to having 105 millimeter guns rather than the 128s that we're gonna see on a Z52. These are basically Bismarck secondaries and they actually have a decent reload here. The DPM though is specifically focused on the armor piercing. Just look at how much alpha damage those AP shells have. Nearly 2,500, where the HE is a little bit lacking at uh, 1,200 per shell hit. So the HE will be fine here, but realistically, we're trying to make use of the armor piercing. The AP shells, though, themselves seem to be pretty standard. Normal ricochet angles, normal fuse, fuse thresholds, as well as fuse times. So we don't have the insanely short fuse time like the Druid for, would have, for example. Uh, but it's pretty standard compared to a Z-52 or things like Holland, Gearing, Daring. They all have the same fuse time. So I do expect to be using a lot of armor piercing, uh, but the HE doesn't seem too bad considering you already pen 26 millimeters thanks to that German quarter pen on the HE. 6% fire chance though is not amazing, especially when we consider uh, some other ships. I'll just scroll over quickly to uh, Daring. That's always my first example here where you get like a 9% fire chance and that's without a commander even. Uh, you know, so in that 5% fire chance range, it feels a lot more like the older ships like Gearing has a 5% fire chance somewhere in there. Uh, so 6%, nothing special here. And torpedoes are also not particularly special. Uh, you only get eight of them. They have a pretty long reload for how low damage, low speed, low range. 10 kilometer range is fine, but at tier 10, where we have a lot of radars and long range spotting ability, it'd be a little bit difficult to, to use these torps. So not amazing there. The depth charges, of course, are going to be very difficult to use thanks to having to just walk over top of a submarine, which oftentimes is going to get you killed. So we're not really going to focus on that too much. The AA might be okay. We all know how AA works, though, in this game, right? Maneuverability wise, though, we're reasonably quick. And our turning radius and our rudder shift time are just kind of all right, I would say. A really important thing to notice here is we have slightly worse concealment than a Z-52. So 6.1 on a Z-52, where the Z-44 has 6.2. So a small difference there. However, the gimmick with this ship, I think, is going to be the consumables. You have a short burst smoke generator, which is going to be amazing for these little ambush plays. It's really, really nice to have. Reminds me a lot of the Daring, for example. It's nice and flexible, allowing you to use the smoke as a get out of jail free kind of card where you get spotted where you don't want to, pop your smoke, run away, that kind of thing. And you have seven of them. At least with this build, we're running Superintendent, which you might not need to considering you'd have six then normally. Uh, they don't last very long though, so keep that in mind. These are more pop a smoke, farm for a little bit, and then reposition. You're gonna wanna be repositioning quite a bit with this ship. The engine boost, pretty standard here, uh, but very nice to have. And a normal German Hydro. So here's gonna be the powerful part. With these short burst smoke generators, pop a smoke, close to a cap, in a cap zone, whatever, and then use your Hydro to spot the enemy DD within their smoke. Uh, this has always been kind of the Z52 gimmick here, but it's very difficult to use on the Z52, thanks to having more normal smokes that once you've used it, it doesn't come back for a very, very long time. Where this one reloads a lot quicker, and you're able to be much more flexible. So I expect it to be a little easier to ambush DDs and make use of this smoke plus hydro gimmick. However, we do not have a heal and we only have 23,000 hit points. So we do have to be a little bit more careful there. There's gonna be some very strong ships that we could go up against that have as much or more DPM than we do and possibly the ability to spot us as well in our smoke screen through friendly radar on their side or even just carrying it themselves. Not everybody has it, but ships like Smallend are gonna be terrifying to deal with. It's very difficult. So keep that in mind. You are not this all powerful being on the battlefield where you can just walk in and hydro people. Uh, but we're definitely going for a full gun build here. We're trying to take advantage of especially that armor piercing so main battery mod three, pretty standard build here. I do think running a hydro mod might be useful here to extend that hydro duration, giving us multiple short burst smoke generators worth of hydro out of one charge of hydro. 
Could be interesting. We're also using Luchin since it's pretty easy to activate some of these skills on DDs, especially, um, sorry, the main guns one here. 140 hits, not too big a deal on a destroyer. And if we're getting some uh, spotting, we get a little bit of a heal. So that's not too bad either. The build looks a little something like this. Um, definitely buffing that armor piercing here. And we're just ignoring Torps entirely. I do think that um, not taking Grease the Gears could be a small issue here since the turret traverse is 20 seconds on 105 millimeter guns. We're approaching Ohio levels of turret traverse and that ship has 457s. Uh, it's, it's a balancing decision. I understand, I understand. So we'll see how painful it is with the turret traverse. So let's see how this ship plays in a few games and then I'll give you some more first impressions, final thoughts kind of thing. So first game here, let's see how this thing goes. Already some initial impressions. Uh, the turret angles aren't all that amazing. Just look at how much broadside you have to give to shoot all of these guns. Uh, there are a lot of them, to be fair, but it's going to be a little bit difficult to make use of that if you're not in your smoke screen. Um, also, I should note that the uh, smoke fire penalty is 2.6, so keep that in mind if someone's getting that close to you. You've probably dealt with them with your hydro smoke combo, but just to keep that in mind as well. And just look at this turret traverse. It is glacial. It is very slow. It is very, very slow. Um, so keep that kind of in mind with this ship. Might be difficult to play if you're not really anticipating where the enemy team is going to go. However, this might be the perfect map for us to play, or at least one of them. Caps with islands in them are going to be perfect for us because we get to push in, use the islands for our to help our concealment out, and then once we have the whole cap covered in our hydro, we basically act as a massive deterrence there for uh, any DD. It's basically we've got it under control. Keep in mind though, no radar on the enemy team, so that's why I'm able to play this aggressive. So not going to work every time, but uh, in this case, pretty nice. Let's pop our first smoke and uh, check out the DPM really quick. I'm gonna be focused on the AP here since that does seem to be what we wanna do. Decent first salvo there. Actually pretty good damage, honestly. Let's see if we can deal with the Schroeder here. I don't know if we have the pen necessarily to get through his upper belt. But, uh, yeah, this, this DPM feels pretty nice. <laughs> Alrighty then. But notice our smoke is already getting close to dissipating. And then as soon as people angle, that's when it's going to be a little bit difficult, right? To uh, get a bunch of damage on people. So now that we've used our first smoke, I think I want to get in a position to still deal with these guys. Although my team is going to do reasonably well here, I think. They're kind of turning around, actually. 17 seconds remaining on our reload here. So really, that's a very nice, flexible tool to have. Notice nobody's in B here, so I'm not really worried about getting uh, super flanked from that position. Maybe we can shoot from dark here. No, not quite. It's fine. We've got a smoke screen coming up. After the Schroeder again. We'll try out the HE here once uh, we have enough targets that are just too angled to us. Let's see how this does. Maybe we can get some lucky fires. That is something nice about hitting a lot of shells, right? Is you're more likely to get fires, but uh, the damage output's gonna be much lower. Or so, still on the flank. That's fine. So overall, like one of the things that I really enjoy about the Daring specifically, and one of the reasons I like to recommend it as one of the early DDs you get is the flexibility you gain from this uh, really nice smoke. I like it a lot. So having it here on a German DD is pretty cool, I gotta say. Let's see, at range, 12 kilometer range. Notice I'm not taking any extra buffs to our range see just how brutal the shell velocity can get. Uh, we do activate a Luchin's perk already, which feels pretty nice, I gotta say. So, you know, running Luchin's on a ship like this is gonna be pretty viable since it's a premium. It's one of those things where you get all these special commanders and then 
you don't have necessarily the ability to run them on all your tech tree ships without spending so much money on uh, doubloons and respects, that kind of thing. See how much damage we do to a Marceau here? That is 3,500. Alrighty. So, pretty good. Uh, pretty good AP damage output against a DD at range here. Of course, at closer ranges, it'll be very interesting to see how much we do um, versus overpens, right? That's going to be the downside here, is if we get a lot of overpens at close ranges, it could be very difficult to deal damage before we die. Um, we don't have the HP, like I said. We don't have a heal. We do have to be careful. Turrets turning slowly, getting there. <laughs> Takes a second, certainly. And uh, yeah, looks like we're definitely losing over here. See if we can't spot this Salmon. Maybe we can get some, uh, some of our guys to have some shots, or we can just kill them ourselves. Nice. I think I'll just smoke. Let's not take this engagement. Nice. Getting a tor pit on the hot. They're not going to do that much damage, fortunately. Even our turret angles back are not great either, as we can see. But, you know, using our smoke defensively like this is a totally viable way to use it, right? It's great to have that flexibility. Where with a ship like maybe a gearing, for example, you're not going to do that because all oh, these smokes are so valuable. They last so long. I don't really want to waste them like that, right? That's really nice here. Marceau flanking here. That's fine. Our smoke's running out, so I'm actually going to pop a booster here and uh, start to leave. I don't really want to take an engagement where the battleships can support a lot. We want to slow down here. We want to make sure we kill this guy. Nice. Yeah, so the AP feels great into uh, most things. The damage output is very nice. So if you see one of these things, definitely try to angle to it. Force it to use that uh, uh, weak HE. That's going to be the key here. Um, also, trying to get it to take an engagement with you where it stays flat broadside. I think that's going to be some of the bait where if you're not, if you run into someone who's not very good at the game, which, you know, it's fair. The game, the game takes a while to learn at times, right? It will probably be a situation where the person that spends too much time broadside and these ships will die quick. That'll be, that's kind of my prediction. Uh, we'll see if that actually pans out. But as you can see, in a uh, thunderstorm here, our hydro extends past our detection range. <laughs> so, um, could be a very strong gimmick, right? Not every map is going to have a thunderstorm, though. Does he come back? He does. All right, let's use it. And that should make us live a little bit longer here. And I think we just kind of wait here. And see what happens. I think we got to be patient. He did a blind drop. That's fine. So another thing that this is going to be useful for is dealing with when dealing with carriers specifically. Um, it's going to allow us to smoke up most of the time when the carrier comes by, which will be great. We got the Kitakazi permanently spotted. I don't think that's really going to do a whole lot for us. We need to lead a lot more here. Marseille could have the Hydro. A rough time for that smoke to expire. Uh, I can't stay here, I don't think. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta go around this flank, I think. Here's to be going for it. Nope. It's fine. So, we have a smoke screen now available. Damn, that's a rough hydro. 
but I think we get away from it. Should be 5 or 5.5. I should mostly miss. Ugh, that hurts. Probably ate too much there. So, 95k. Close game. We like close games. Ah, uh, here's the gimmick, right? Here's the gimmick. Bullpens, let's go. Bullpens, let's go. Yeah, so he probably didn't know, uh, is my guess. Which is totally fair, like, <laughs> this is a test ship at the moment, right? So let's keep that in mind. So it's not fair, or it's not, you know, expected for him to know that I'm going to be like this, right? But that can happen. That can happen. Don't walk into this thing. Once it's out more, people understand what the ship has. You're certainly going to get more, uh, more times where... People are just gonna know what's up and and uh, not run into you. Let's smoke up, use some HE, try and light some perma fires on this guy. All right, I think he's done. Maybe not worth the smoke, considering I only have one left now. <laughs> hey, someone got combat scout. Oh my goodness. That's the one required for the uh, new Pan Asia Commander. Oops. I gotta look where I'm going. There's an Ohio here. So we're ahead, but it's still it's still a really close game, man. Still quite close. It feels like to me. Maybe not. But we've done good work so far. Nice, so we do get a Torp hit, let's go. Alright, he seems to be aware of exactly where I am, <laughs> feels bad. But let's see if we can kill this uh, Schroeder here. That should be a Permafire, it should be him dead. I'm always going to be moving in my smoke, trying to uh, limit how much people can hit me in my smoke. Aiming up into a superstructure. Got a heal. His turrets aren't really looking at me, that's why I'm kind of going for this now. I think he used his damage control as well. No fire though, unfortunately. Nice. Okay, they get him. Very good. So what I'm going to do here is not actually push into them over here. I actually am just going to try and run back to B and hope that I can uh, stall the cap. But I think we win anyway. Assuming we don't, like, lose uh, our sub, for example, here. Which could happen. But that's going to be uh, four kills. Not bad. All right. All right. A good win there. We will take that as our first game. So AP DPM seems pretty nice. 505 hits means Luchin's is very much wanted on this ship. Wow, looks like our sub did some serious work. All right. So not a lot of damage out of the Torps, unsurprisingly, but uh, the main guns feel pretty nice. So we got another game here without much radar. And uh, 
you know, it does make it a lot easier, I gotta say. But uh, we do have a carrier in this one at least. We'll try and uh, gimmick some of these people here. There's a Grozovoy potentially coming in here. Get ready to slow down and use a smoke screen here. It's the Balao. So we do have a sub to deal with here. Surprised the girls avoid didn't uh, push in here as aggressively, but fair enough. Hydro will help us deal with subs some of the time, at least. And you know, once you've used your smoke hydro combo, you know, sometimes you can just stay in here. Other times, well, <laughs> you'll get forced out, but hey, it happens. Looks like the Grozovoy went back this way. It's interesting. We don't have a lot of support here, so may as well just run. It's a nice thing about, another nice thing about having these really fast cooldown smokes. All right, we got a Summers, apparently. And yeah, here's the gimmick. <laughs> oh my goodness, the AP, bro. The AP just crushes them. Well, that's, uh, that's a Summers. Still uh, just have enough Hydro to catch the Summers Torps and maybe any Balao Torps that are coming in. Um, his Sonar Ping isn't gonna last too long. And now, uh, one DD dealt with. Our sub is gonna go up the one line. I don't really want to play too aggressive here. Yeah, so there's sub torps. There's a Schlieffen pushing it. Oh boy. Put those torps there, and we run. We just run away. We don't want to be messing around with a Schlieffen. He'll probably eat a bunch of damage, but you notice our Mecklenburg's playing really passive, so... Our Napoli's kind of around the island at this point, so really not too much that we can do here. I'll probably smoke up though and try and farm him unless he uh, fully turns out here, which looks like he's gonna do. If he continued pushing, then I would have smoked up. All right, our sub lost the uh, sub engagement, so that means we definitely have to play passive here. That sub will be pushing and trying to find someone to take out. I think I'll probably torp the Vermont, though, uh, since Schlieffen probably goes down quicker. i torp where I think the Vermont's going to go. And then eventually I'll smoke up and uh, start to farm this Schlieffen here. The other reason I'm using Islands is it's a great way to deal with submarines. That's a, a really nice thing about uh, Islands. They help you deal with the homing torpedoes pretty nicely. All right, so opening up now. Zooming out one tick here can help you with leading a lot of times with these really fast ships at range. Aiming for superstructure, getting some pretty good damage still. Reasonable. Yeah, that's pretty good, considering the reload. Now that he's angling, I think we want some HE. There we go, we finally activate Luchins this game. Took a second. Looks like we'll get one on the Vermont. That feels pretty nice. No flood. And only 7,000 damage because Vermont Torp Belt. <laughs> but fair enough. Okay, and we're not detected here. There, we can see where the enemy sub is. So he's just going to spend his game chasing us by the looks of things. So that's where we just kind of chill here around these islands and... Hope our team does well on the other side of the map. Sometimes that's all you can hope for. Smoke up here so we don't get spotted. That's kind of the idea. <laughs> I am not sure why this sub is making it his mission to uh, come after us, but he is. That seems like not, a, not the best use of his time, but hey. I suppose that's how we're playing this. Maybe maybe I send Torps back at him, see what happens. 
Although he can just duck under them so easily. So maybe not. He's the HE here. We got some spotting from our team. Just enough range to hit this guy. I don't think running range mod would be something I want to do on this ship, to be honest. It's just not all that appealing to me with the shell velocity here, but maybe I'm wrong. If there's enough battleships that are just going to sit still, like this Vermont would at 15 kilometers, let's say, maybe it'd be pretty good. It obviously should remind you a lot of something like Barigamo, with the number of guns, small turrets, that kind of thing. We just don't have the uh, quite the shell pan of a Harigamo. But we're more maneuverable, I would say. Much more versatile ship. Able to contest cap zones with our Hydro is pretty nice. Um, I'm going to pop my Hydro. See if the uh, sub is pushing me at all. That's something I want to be aware of. But it uh, looks like he's not. Just concerned that he would come YOLO around for me. But uh, that's not going to happen. So let's use our speed boost. Push, away, push out of here. Activate. Ah, uh, we know where he is. He's in the he's in the cap. Nebelwand gelegt. No. Oh, he gets me. Man, dealing with subs is so hard, man. So apparently while I got up to get a drink, we won. Uh, I'm not sure how, but... Hey, I'll take it. Somehow that ended in victory. So, Z42 seems like an interesting DD. I forgot to mention at the intro that it will be available for steel. Uh, specifically 27,000 steel. So... Quite a bit of steel. Um, it's a very interesting DD to actually have a decent smoke hydro gimmick. I think it's going to be much better than the Z52's smoke hydro. It seemed much easier to use thanks to those smokes. Uh, I really enjoy the short duration fast cooldown smokes where you can just smoke up, farm for a bit, and then reposition. I really enjoy that. I think the torps are pretty weak. Obviously, I didn't build for them, but it really didn't have much to add. The turret traverse feels awkward, like really awkward. Uh, the AP damage is very, very nice, I'll say that. Um, and the HE did fine. Maneuverability-wise, you're not the fastest. The rudder shift isn't amazing, and you're not quite as stealthy as you could be. Although, given that you have a 6-kilometer hydro to spot people at, I think a 0.2-kilometer detection between hydro range and your detection is pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, again, the commander build looked a little something like this. You saw how easy it was to activate Luchins. It's very, very, very easy to get this buff off. And that's a further 7.5% to our DPM, which feels very, very nice. So I expect that for those of you that have the steel to actually get this ship, you probably have Luchins, and you're going to enjoy it that way. So high DPM and a smoke hydro gimmick. That is going to be the Z42 first impressions. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching this video. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.